Hi, I'm Michael Mazzini and I will read my short story, Perpetual Zero, that was published in 2018. Today, 8.51 minutes. The bus came in at nine. I hit the motor pull, pulling on the ropes, the elevator approaches and stops. The door opens, hesitantly and first, then with a trust, followed by steps down the corridor and the director appears around the corner. The previous one dragged his feet and was sometimes still straightening his jacket as he reached me, occasionally even checking his flies. The current one is gurgling, clears his throat to make way for the first work of the day. He nods, shifts his briefcase from one hand to other, and sets off through the desks, constantly turning his head left and right, returning greetings with a smile and a nod. After last night, I don't know whether yesterday's director will still be today's. All I am, all I believe in depends on it. My insights are a tense tangle of nerves, pulling me forward, bending over into a somersault, and only with force I straighten up. All around rows of heads behind computer screens, figures behind barriers don't notice my anguish. Who will it be? Yesterday. 8 p.m. I'm 35 and still have a photo of Steve Jobs stuck above my bed, the same one that was on the book cover, his thumb supporting his chin, his eyes gazing sorrowfully and piercingly at you, seeing into the depths of your soul, asking you what you have done today towards your success. I had photos of him and other businessmen in my room, even as a child. I was never fascinated with pop stars, but the people who manage them. A singer believes they are at the top of the world when they jump around on stage and the audience copy their waving. But in fact, the real power hides in the balance figures on data sheet, the list of contacts and a full schedule. I completed my studies at just about the time when an excellent degree no longer meant a job. In fact, jobs has, had already disappeared. All that was left was the work and so many candidates for it that we did it for free just to get a reference. It wasn't uh, that hard for me. I borrowed from my parents until they said no, took out a credit, filled my CV with illustrious names and slowly began getting my first paid work. Companies no longer employed, merely entered into contact with other companies. I also opened my own and worked in it as a director, secretary and worker, all in one. I have been sitting in this, in this corporation for two years. I bring in my own computer every morning. The desk and chair are theirs, so they knock something off my fee for their use. I must work hard to be able to continue to afford my own room because the step back from sharing a flat to sharing a room would just be humiliating. I no longer want to wake up with a bunk bed about me or fall asleep worried nightmares might make me leap up and hit my head on the top bunk. A flat of my own is still unattainable, but I know that by working hard, I will certainly succeed. Suddenly, I will be coming to work at nine and re read my name on the ridge list. As a youngster, I read interview with businessmen from Silicon Valley and recall many saying that they were slogging their guts out so that they could retire at 35 and spend the rest of their lives sailing and doing humanitarian work. They seemed awfully old at the age they were mentioning further away than the moon. I woke up every three to four hours, checked my emails and replied to all the business correspondence. I know that doctors would call this information technology addiction, but success demands all of you at all times. Last summer, we went to a congress and, uh, to congress and to reduce costs, five of us shared a car. I will never forget the young man who drove us. When we stopped at the red light, he just stared ahead instead of using the spare minute to check his emails. What a loser. I thought at the time, and indeed soon after, the corporation also realized he was not made of the right stuff. The company I made, I have contract with, was uh, was bought three months ago by another corporation. 
a large portion of the employees were immediately made redundant. I rarely meet any of them, as they're older, usually in other buildings or on their own floors. When I first came into contact with them as a trainee, they looked upon us with the curled lips of those who have it all and are horrified with newcomers. Now they walk around shyly and speak quietly, preferring to call you rather than email you in order to avoid their bosses accusing them of bad decisions. The dinosaurs after meteorite when the climate is already icy and the air thick with deadly gases. The new owners also canceled around 20% of contract with us companies at first glance randomly, including both good and bad workers, but after thinking about it for a while, I could find a reason for every single one. Contracts were canceled during a lunch break. As soon as the elevator left, two security guards would step to the workplace, switch off the computer, empty the contents of the drawers into cardboard box, place the pot plant on top, and we would watch how it leaves trembled as everything was being carried away toward the exit. When the laid off member of staff returned, their pass was rejected at the door. They turned to the porter, but before they had a chance to ask anything, they noticed the familiar plant on top of the cardboard box. The new boss gathered us all in the conference hall and appropriately gave a speech on dedicated work, lowering cost, capex, opex, productivity, challenges that await us on the way to success. He did not use a microphone. His voice became more and more resonant. So by the end, he had us all clenching our teeth and fists with his enthusiasm. I checked his profile on the business network. He's 62 with an admirable list of the leading positions. At, at his first performance, he has, his hair was dyed jet black. Slowly he allowed the grayness to return to it. He clearly must also have started visiting a solarium since his clean shaven face has an even deeper tan. He probably wanted to make up for the summer he was losing by always leaving last, usually after sunset. He was serious about increasing productivity. So on the day I would receive a number of to-do lists, neatly numbered with tabs and a box. I could tick when the task was done. His secretary would often take coffee into his office, and a few times a week, a young man in an appropriately light suit and gaudy tie would arrive, undoubtedly bringing him something stronger. Task would also come at weekends, and there were moments when I wondered how I would manage to follow a person who is capable of such dedication. Albert with chemical aids, uh, which, apart from coffee, I cannot afford. At lunchtime, we compared our experiences with antidepressants. They can, they can stuff such a life. A man who sat next to me said out loud suddenly, and I only looked at him for the first time as he was leaving. We all quickly turned back to our sandwiches and nobody said anything else. What a loser, I thought to myself. Life is a testing ground of what we are made of. Happiness does not come to those who wait, but those who make an effort. For the past months, I have been staying on at work longer than the director. The cleaning ladies grumbled when they had to wake them around me, but I gave them a contemptuous look. They work for exploiting intermediary agencies while I am on my own boss. Most of the time, the boss would leave at around 8, once even after 10 o'clock. To start with, he would walk past me without greeting. Then he be began saying goodbye. Aha, he's noticing me. And over the last week, he would even slow his step briefly as if he wanted to say something. It felt as if he was giving me more and more work. I compared the number of tasks on the list over the weeks. And during lunch break, I also asked my colleagues. I was right. We ate in a hurry and anxiously pressed our passes against the reader, glancing towards the doorman, relieved that our pot plant was not waiting for us. People who work a lot get more work, but only work can bring success. Soon I no longer had to uh, spread it out. I had enough work to actually need to stay on long. The day before yesterday, the director stopped in front of me. How is it going, miss? I needed to quickly wet my lips. They were so dry with excitement. Well, well, sir. 
Keep it up, he said and laughed. Yesterday the conversation was even longer. I read your CV, impressive. Thank you, sir. But the spare time section, I think, no time, sir. Children, husband, partner. I deliberately, proudly stressed, no time, sir. He nodded and left. Yesterday, 8.30 p.m. The phone rang today. The one on my desk, part of standard equipment that has never rang before. Can you briefly come to my office, please? I looked across the entire floor towards the heavy hardwood door. Harassment, I thought to myself. I walked along, fixing my hair and blouse, thinking and coming to the realization that a few years ago, something like this would shock me, but at this point in my career, I would settle for anything that might facilitate my bre breakthrough. I knocked and realized I should knock again harder. Come in. I never imagined that the office would be so big with its wonderful view across town and a large terrace, which even had a couple of trees growing in it. Were I to push open the sliding door, the heat, smells, and noise of late spring would burst inside. Not bad, is it? He nodded. He sat in an armchair with his feet on a leather support stool, turned towards the window, his back to the computer and his desk. He was smoking an electronic cigarette and a cloud of vapor just floated across his cap. Excuse me, I realized my mouse was a dark and surprised. He beckoned at me to come, to come closer. I stopped parallel with him a few meters away. He had a book open in his lap. I strained my eyes to see what manual he was reading so I could immediately go and buy one for myself. The life of Dostoevsky, he said. Yes, five thick volumes. It's not that I'm particularly interested in Dostoevsky. It's the megalomania that attracts me. Someone starts writing a biography of some writer and writes it all their life. They go deeper and deeper and they were immortal. They would dig so long they would become that other person. I like people who resist. A drink? Uh, uh, no, 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 thank you. I only have whiskey, nothing sweet for the ladies. No, thank you, I, I don't drink. Why not? I decided I would sincerely find an answer because I don't want to be absent. I want to be me. Have control? Yes, he nodded, pulling himself a drink. We were both silent. There goes another working day, he said to himself, and added for me, I have a glass every evening. I allow myself that. Are you sure you don't want one? I have not finished everything yet, I added, and regretted that I sounded too enthusiastically falling. He dragged deeply on his nicotine vapor, vanilla. Oh well, he said, if I go on like this, I'll know more about Dostoevsky than about myself. He's still only a student, and I'm about to come to the end of volume one. Of all megalomania, the one I admire most is glacial slowness. Do you smoke? No. Have you ever? No. I envy you. It's a habit I cannot kick. I know how bad it is. To be honest, when I had some bass during the day over there, he pointed to the deck chair between the trees. I light a real cigarette. This isn't much of a substitute. He looked at me and almost laughed. That look on your face. I like bad emotions because I rarely see them. Your surprise makes up for an entire day worth of monotony. Excuse me, sir. I'm not sure what are you saying. What you spend the entire day reading, smoking, and sunbathing. Precisely that. But I got a list of tasks from you five times. Yes, turn, I turn it up. Turn it up? Yes, he went towards the computer. And that's the problem. I could feel sweat trickling from my armpits despite the control temperature and strong antiperspirant. Excuse me, but I don't understand. Look at me, he back. I stepped closer. Who am I? He asked. The director? He should, he has sharply interrupted me. I'm the human face of chance. I thought he might have lost it and unwittingly looked towards the door. Don't worry, I'm not crazy, he said and took a seat. Also, you recognize a crazy person the moment they assure you they are not crazy. And no, I'm not drunk either. This is my first and only drink of the day. Well, of course, all drunkards say the same. Excuse me, I still have a lot of work. He waved his hand dismissively. Oh, come on. 
I understand that I may be scaring to with all these strange things I'm telling you. Very logical, incomprehensible. Stuff that is not in manuals on business success and behavior. Have you read about the experiment when legal texts were first studied by lawyers and then by a computer program? And there was no difference in the effect. A similar experiment was conducted with decision making in corporation, and there was no difference either. In the end, with these numbers and volume, chance is good enough. I don't understand what you're trying to say. I'm trying to say, he turns towards me, that I'm bored as hell. At my age, I'm paid like some damn student. Thanks God I can come to work with briefcase and I can smuggle in cigarettes, a book, and a bottle. What else is there left? I've been forbidden contact with employees. He leaned forward and stank of alcohol. His eyes gleamed red in the evening light. This being the director business, I said to myself, I can't do this. It's like the stage. I've spent my entire life acting on obscure stages. Now I at least have more of an audience that takes me seriously, even if the pay is equally as bad. Between you and me, the charm of theater is not at the money, but in construction, people's souls are new. If you are good, they are one way when they arrive and quite different when they leave. This different is called art. He sat and lo looked up towards the ceiling. They said I was too pompous for film. Now they move around companies I know nothing about or care for. My speeches before Mars, redundancies are my Henry's and Othello's. Only the Shakespeare for the likes of me is a program which randomly passes together paragraphs. Sooner or later, everyone finds their place in creation, unfortunately, with a feeling that God messed it up for them. He stayed silent for a long time before turning to the terrace. But the view is great, isn't it? So do you want me to call anyone? He laughed. <laughs> you mean an ambulance? If you want, I don't. Do you want me to prepare a list of urgent tasks just for you? He swirled his chair to the computer, moved the mouse to get the screen going, and made a few clicks. They're done. It's waiting for you in the inbox. Run along and start carrying out the tasks. Well, I couldn't move. Well, he repeated. He stood up and stretched his arms. Why did I pick on you? He pointed his finger at me and replied to his own question. Because you are a believer. Excuse me, but... Oh yes, I can recognize the likes of you in a mile away. Damn believers. In medieval time, you'd be creeping around churches, hoping you, uh, you'll once become a saint. Now you crawl around corporations on your knees, hoping for wealth. Finances have replaced spirituality. The response of your bodies is the same. Religion has merged with economics and that is contemporary society great achievement. Look around town, where cathedrals used to reach for the sky, now it's corporate skyscrapers instead. And how do I recognize all of you believers? Because I was the same, quite the same, but a believer in art, in acting. And now when I am almost 70, the role of my career is this, fucking playing the director for minimum wages. But sir, excuse me, but stop all this, sir, excuse me, sir, stop. You're supposed to be intelligent, but you just don't get it. We are both in the same sheet, don't you get it? When they said the first wave, the 20%, you sold logic, admit it, didn't you? I did. And did you find any? I did. They dismissed the worst? Yes. Come here. He beckoned with his finger again. He leaned, acro leaned, leaned across the computer and clicked. There will be more redundancies the day after tomorrow, and you purge. So I will give a new motivational speech tomorrow. Let's put together a list according to clear rules. He clicked again and a list appeared on the screen. Look through it. Are you in there? No. Clear criteria? No. If you stare at it long enough, you're likely to find them. Well, let's try again. He clicked again and a new list replaced the previous one. And now, are you on it? I am. You didn't work well enough, didn't you? You didn't toll away with enough devotion but he clicked the button, a new list. Don't you get it that this is randomly generated coincidence? Click yourself. I hesitated and then obeyed. I created a number of lists. 
you see has research shows that just the right mix of peer obedience and motivation is generated if the owner occasionally lays off 20 percent of the workforce and continuously keeps reorganizing because our brain always looks for a purpose the need to occupy it by not providing one so these redundancies must be random nobody should know the time of the day rely on their previous performance that intentions or plans for any moment they must be starting out from zero so their life becomes a fluctuation around their perpetual zero up a little sometimes down a little at other times but never really moving on from zero now switch to the other window he pointed with his finger i obeyed and saw a list of tasks it must have been very long as the scroll bar on the right became really small now press this key he pointed with his key index finger. I did what he asked. Short lists were created on screen and sent out to, uh, to our email addresses. I have to set the randomness in motion manually, but not this. Tasks and chores are sent out automatically. Well, I set it how many times a day. I was bored and increased the frequency in recent days. I realized I was gasping. His face softened. Look, he said gently. The people who put together this list are tempting workers on minimal pay. Raise OPEX, increase brand recognizability, shit like that. The lists are written as Rorschach tests. Everyone is seizing them what they need to. Other tempting workers on minimal, uh, tempting workers on minimal wages created the programs that randomly send tasks, layoffs, all random. If the system is big enough, the chances are very good, especially if you consider how cheap it is. They used to have to pay millions to a director in my position, and then they realized that they can't be much better than chance. So they hired failed actors of suitable looks to sit in the offices for minimal wages, cutting costs. I hate coffee and put it down the sink. They only seemingly bring me amphetamines and coke. I have the time, so I think perhaps too much. Middle-ranking directors were needed for personal contact with employees. Now you're all companies and you come and go faster than farts after baked beans. So there is no need for anyone to remember you or for you to remember anyone. The computer is quite capable of keeping you busy and nervous, but you need a figure you can hate and suck up to. We are both hamsters running on a wheel. Just that I'm towards the end of my run and you only just started. In 30 years time, you still be in the same position just in some other corporation and you'll think that how rich your life has been. Just like people in the middle ages who imagined that they were about to enter heaven. But your profile fake, he weighed dismissively. Opened his briefcase and threw in his book an almost empty bottle. A packet of cigarettes was already in one of the pockets. Steve Jobs, I cried out, he would never. Do you remember that photo? He put his thumb on his beard. I know that. It was in fact like this. He extended his middle finger in front of his chin, but it was retouched. He shut his briefcase with a bang. Goodbye, he said. I cried out. When he went past me, he stopped and leaned closer to my ear. His tank of cigarettes, whiskey, and aftershave. How I hated him. He whispered. If I'm just kidding you, I'll be here again tomorrow. If not, they will send another act. He bowed theatrically as he was taking off his hat and left. Today, 9 a.m., the elevator is approaching. The door will open. I will hear steps. I cannot take my eyes off the corner where posters were with encouraging slogans hang on the wall. There are only two possibilities. Either it will be the same boss or I'll need another lie.